Welcome to a new edition of the Neon Jazz Interview Series with 19-year-old jazz trumpeter and big band leader Grace Fox. She is releasing her debut CD, the 2022 album, with her big band called 1107 on Blue Collar Records. She is from the New Jersey, Philadelphia area, and she studied with some big names to develop her chops as a trumpet player. She was inspired to create this all-women's big band after recognizing that most of the jazz grades that she was being taught in school by were mostly men. She saw the importance of representing all genders in jazz and especially the importance of giving women a space to play music and support each other. These days she is a student at the prestigious Manhattan School of Music and the world is indeed her oyster. Enjoy this story. Hey, thanks for taking a minute out for Neon Jazz. I appreciate it. Absolutely. Your new big band album, 1107, comes out on March 11th and and I think it's kind of ceremonial just because two years ago we were just entering this COVID world and now hopefully we're getting out of it. So what does this release mean for you? Absolutely. I mean, it's it's kind of funny. It's, it's almost the exact date that, that the world shut down. You know, I think yeah. it was like March 13th of, of 2020. This release is, I mean, not only important for me, I hope it, it, it has some importance in the, the community of, of women in jazz. And it, it was important for us to release this album during Women's Appreciation Month um, as well. So for for me, this is this is really a dream come true. I mean, I'm I'm so young. I'm I'm 19, um, and this was kind of the 10 year goal for me. You know, um, like I, I set this this monumental, crazy goal for myself um, to to accomplish this in, in 10 years, and here we are. I think that's the interesting backstory on this is that in the world of jazz, you just don't hear about a lot of players your age, especially with the big band that actually do this. So how did this happen? How, how, did, how did this get to a point where it came to fruition and now you're on your way? Sure. Um, it's, I was at the right place at the right time. Um, I, I went to high school with um, my my label head. Uh, her name is Isabella Bernard. We were in a, a music technology class together uh, our senior year, and she got the, the the opportunity to start her own record label. And there were you know obviously in, investors, and um, she had the financial support for it, um, which I'm so so blessed. To have, and she reached out to me. Um, and originally, she asked me to kind of do a, a, a bit of like a smaller setting, um, maybe like a combo, six people max, to have my own big band. I mean, that's that's been something that I've been, it's been on my mind forever. So I, I pitched the idea to her, and and her being a woman in this industry, she couldn't say no. <laughs> so yeah, we we had the, the support to do it. And um, it, here we are. <laughs> so what are you hoping the listener that either buys or downloads this album gets from this? What, what, what's the overall feeling you want them to leave with? I, I've shown this album to, to some close friends and, and family, and, and so far they've kind of nailed it on the head. I want, obviously, just the jazz community to appreciate the music, but even more uh, the women in the jazz industry to just be proud to be a woman, you know, and, and, and see that inclusivity and feel a part of this project um, because they are, they are a woman, you know. Well, and I guess before we depart, like, the present right now that's going on with COVID, you know, over this last two years with live performance being crippled and lots of things that have been altered, what what did you learn about yourself over this time that maybe – you didn't realize before that's going to make you just that much stronger as you promote this album and hopefully things start getting warmer and live shows pick up and you promote it. Uh, at the beginning of this project, um, I was so overprepared for everything to go wrong, uh, just logistically, but as especially during the recording and as we prepare for our, yeah. our show at Birdland um, on the 13th, I've learned to trust my band and know that they have my back. So, I mean, preparing for everything to go wrong is always great as a as a band leader, 
But I think with this specific group, the sisterhood is so strong that I, I don't have to worry as much because I know that they have me. So how did this journey begin for you, not only in music but in jazz and and kind of where, where were you born and raised? Um, I was born in Connecticut, <laughs> uh, raised in uh, South Jersey. Um, I went to Cherokee High School. Um, I was like just textbook band nerd, so involved in the in that music program. Um, and there I, I kind of started getting into uh, learning about black American music. My wonderful jazz band director, Earl Phillips, helped me along the way. Yeah, I, I really got into um, studying all of that, I guess, my sophomore year of, of high school. So in the grand scheme of things, um, I am still quite new. Yeah, that's I really owe a lot of this to, to Earl Phillips. I have to shout him out. So what were, who were some early influences for you, early jazz influences that got you thinking that, you know, this is a genre that you love? Well, I uh, I play trumpet first. My kind of uh, category is uh, lead trumpet. I love playing lead in the big band. Uh, players like Snooky Young, um, Frank Green, uh, John Faddis uh, really inspire me. Um, I, I really love uh, Roy Hargrove and, and his big band. And when I when I got out of of high school, I kind of came across um, the Sweethearts of of Rhythm and the Diva Jazz Orchestra, um, which really kind of lit a fire in me, and and that is one of the main inspirations for my band um, is seeing these older all female big bands. So, what was the first live performance that you saw that really? woke you up and made you think, wow, I would love to do that? Uh, let's see. I, I saw the uh, the Army Blues came to my, my high school my junior year, and I think they were one of the first, like, professional big bands that I, that I, um, that I heard. Um, and just the, the wall of sound was so overwhelming in the best way possible. You know, I, I, I just remember being hooked, you know, in, in that moment, especially, um, I think Josh Kaufman was, was playing lead, and I was like, man, this is what I want to do. <laughs> you know, this is probably pretty significant with what we're celebrating this month with women, and um, was was this the premeditated release to come out during this time that, that women are celebrated this month, or is it just coincidental? We definitely discussed um, to release this album for Women's Appreciation Month. We were actually in between releasing it this March or uh, uh, this coming August. We're with uh, two record labels. Uh, one of them is uh, called Blue Collar Records, and one of them is uh, Next Level, uh, associated with Outside and Music. And Roxy Koss is also a uh, part of that label, and she's releasing her album this month, too. Uh, so I think we're the only women under Outside and Music this month releasing music. So I'm I'm really grateful to kind of share that with with her. But yeah, it it was definitely discussed to release it during March. So what do you like the best about being a professional musician? What's the best part of this process for you? Man, I mean, I I'm also uh, a full time student. Um, so I, I study at the Manhattan School of Music. Um, I'm in New York. I just moved here. Uh, this is my first semester. Everything is is very fast paced, which which I like. And I'm not used to, but it's it's kind of at this point I'm I'm really thankful for any call I get, any opportunity uh, that I get, because I mean it's a it's really a dream come true being here and and having a, a support system here. I feel very comfortable uh, living here. With live music coming back, the weather is going to start getting better. Who's on the top of your list to see live in New York? Oh man, um, I think they're they're getting the Roy Hargrove big band uh, back together. So I, I would love to to see that band um, as well as um, the Maria Schneider Orchestra. I think she's playing at Birdland now, uh, so I, I'll have to grab a ticket actually. And then also uh, Darcy James argue um, his his big band as well. So let's say we talk here when you're thirty, and I ask you. First thing, first and foremost, what are you happy 
that's happened in your life up to this point? What do you what do you want what do you want to accomplish? What do you hope happens by the time you're thirty? That that is a, a a question that I've been thinking about recently because, like I said before, this kind of putting this record out with this specific group of people has been the answer to that question for the past five years, <laughs> and now that's done. So what's you know what else? Um, I would love to just play with this band as as much as possible. I mean, it's so expensive to maintain a big band, especially starting out brand new. I think right now um, touring with, with that band would 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 be great. Um, yeah, just, just continuing this, this kind of, this band. So, you know, everyone has a perception or an idea of who they think you are, your family, your friends, your fans, but ultimately – you know yourself, you have a perception of who you are. Who do you think you are? Um, I am the kind of person um, who puts the band first over my needs. And I, I genuinely care about all of them, and I genuinely want them to succeed more than anything. Like, my, I think my, my name is on the roster uh, of this whole thing, but it's really about them, you know. Um, they're they're playing my music, which is great. I'm very thankful for. But this this band is all about giving opportunities to to women in this industry. And at this point, they're all they're all family. Um, so I I would like to you know say that I'm a really giving person in in that sense. And I I just want everyone to be comfortable and and just happy to be there. So tell everybody where they can get the album, the best place, most ideal place to get it, and if they can see you live at any point here in the near future. Absolutely. Um, So tonight at midnight, uh, 1107 will be available on all streaming platforms, uh, Spotify, Apple Music, uh, Amazon, um, Pandora. And we have our debut performance uh, at Birdland this coming Sunday, March 13th. Perfect. That's going to be rather triumphant because that's the day everything shut down and that's the day that you'll be playing. That's pretty good. Yep. Yep. It's crazy. <laughs> wow. Well, cool. Grace, it was great to get to know you. Thank you for opening up about the album. And it's just, it's always really good to see such a good infusion of, of youth out there that's keeping the jazz world moving in the right direction. So thanks for your time. Good luck with everything. Absolutely. Thanks for having me. Thanks for listening and tuning in to another Neon Jazz interview, where we give you a bit of insight into the finest players in New Jersey, Kansas City, and spots all over the world, giving fans all that jazz. And thanks to Grace for her time, music, and enthusiasm. If you want to hear more interviews, go to Famous Interviews with Joe Domino on the iTunes Store. Visit Neon Jazz at YouTube.com. And for everything Neon Jazz all the time, go to the neonjazz.blogspot.com. Until next time, enjoy the jazz, my friends. Neon Jazz.